the hinge theorem and the converse of the hinge theorem. We're at 5.6a with 11 videos for chapter 5 that are in the geometry playlist. We can apply inequality relationships between two triangles. When opening a door, the angle between the door and the doorway increases, and the distance across the floor from the door to the door jamb also increases. This is like the side opposite an angle in a triangle getting larger as the measure increases or getting smaller as the angle decreases. So the point from the corner of this to the tip of the door, that segment would get larger and larger as the angle got bigger. See? As the hinge opened up more, then that segment would get bigger. This geometric relationship is summarized in the hinge theorem and its converse. So here it is. So we have inequalities in two triangles. And here's the hinge theorem. It says if two sides, okay, two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle and the triangles are not congruent, then the longer third side is across from the larger included angle. So BA is congruent to DE and AC is congruent to DF. And triangle ABC is not congruent to triangle DEF. A is, the measure of angle A right here is greater than the measure of angle D right here. See? So that means BC is greater than EF. So we could even use a hardcover book. As I open this book, this would be the hinge. As I open this book, the distance from this point right here to the tip of the page right here is going to get bigger. And this angle right here is going to grow. And if we had a string or something as a segment between this point right here and this point right here, we would see that segment grow, okay? Or look at this pair of scissors. As the angle of the scissors increases, that segment increases, see? Now the converse of the hinge theorem says, if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the third sides are not congruent, then the larger included angle is across from the larger side. So we know HJ is congruent to LM and GJ is congruent to KM, but HG is not congruent to KL, so GH is greater than KL. And the measure of angle J, this one here, is greater than the measure of angle M. So remember in a converse, we swap the hypothesis and conclusion, okay? So here's the converse of the hinge theorem and an indirect proof. We've got these two triangles, and we can see this red side PQ is congruent to this red side XY. And we can see the green side PR is congruent to the green side XZ. So it's given that PQ is congruent to XY and PR is congruent to XZ. It's also given that QR, this one, is greater than YZ. We need to prove that the measure of angle P is greater than the measure of angle X here. So we want to prove that this angle is greater than this angle. So here's our indirect proof. We're going to do a contradiction of the proof statement. So we're going to assume that the measure of angle P is not greater than the measure of angle X. That's how we'll do the indirect proof. Well, if it's not greater, then it's got to be less than or equal to, right? So in case one, let's do less than. If the measure of angle P is less than the measure of angle X, well, then QR is less than YZ by the hinge theorem because if this is less than this, then this must have a smaller QR, right? Then YZ must be greater. But this contradicts the given information that QR is greater than YZ, so it can't be less, all right? Now, case two, let's try equals. If the measure of angle P is equal to the measure of angle X, well, then it would be congruent, wouldn't it? If they're equal, they're congruent. So triangle PQR would be congruent to triangle XYZ by side angle side. We got a side congruent. These would be congruent angles, and then we'd have another side congruent. So it would be side angle side. 
then segment QR would be congruent to segment YZ because of CPCTC. Congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. If the triangles are congruent, then all the parts are congruent. And then QR would equal YZ. Then this would equal this. But that's a contradiction too because the given says QR is greater than YZ. See? So it can't be equal. And the assumption is angle P is not greater than the measure of angle X is false. It is greater. So what we did was, it wanted us to prove that it was greater, so what we did was the opposite. We proved it wasn't smaller and it wasn't equal to prove it was greater, okay? And be careful when you're writing your angle symbol for angle. Make sure you make it flat on the bottom because you might confuse it for a less than sign or your teacher or whoever is grading your papers. Make sure the angle symbol is flat on the bottom, okay? When we're writing so many of them like this, you know, with less than and angle signs and everything, you wanna make sure you can tell them apart. Now, using the hinge theorem and its converse, take a look at this drawing here. We can see PQ is a seven and QR is a seven, but look, PS is 5.3 and SR is 5.1. So this one's smaller than this one. We need to compare the measure of angle PQS right up in here and RQS right up in here. We compare the side lengths in triangle PQS, RQS, sorry about that, in triangle RQS. So PQ is a seven is equal to QR is a seven or RQ. And QS is equal to QS. Well, that's the reflexive property, right? Because they're sharing it. And PS is greater than RS. We can see that. That's 5.1, 3, and that's 5.1. So by the converse of the hinge theorem, the measure of angle PQS is greater than the measure of angle RQS. If this is greater, then this angle must be greater than that angle because that's smaller, okay? Now take a look at this diagram. We need to compare KL and MN. So we compare the sides and angles. We can see that's 57 degrees, that's 53 degrees. Now remember, we're comparing this one to this one. Comparing the sides and angles in the two triangles, KN right here is a six, that's equal to ML, that's a six. And LN, right here is equal to LN. That's reflexive property, right? They're sharing it. And the measure of angle LNK, LNK is 53 degrees, which is less than the measure of angle NLM, which is 57 degrees. So by the hinge theorem, KL, this segment, is less than MN. If that's got a greater measure, degree measure, then that must be bigger than that one, right? Now take a look at this one. We can see BC is congruent to CD. And that's only a 24 and that's a 25. And AC is 6Z minus 3. And we've got a 45 degree angle here. So we need to find the range of values for Z. First thing we do for step one is we compare the side lengths in triangle ABC and ADC. Well, AC equals AC. That's reflexive property, right? They're sharing it. And CB is congruent to CD. We've got congruent marks there. AB is less than AD. We can see that's less. That's 24 and that's a 25. So by the converse of the hinge theorem, the measure of angle BCA, this measure right here, this one right here, is less than the measure of angle DCA, this 45 degree one. We do 6z minus 3 is less than 45, okay? Because we've got it's less than this one, and that one's 45. So 6z minus 3 is less than that 45. And what we can do is add 3 to both sides of the inequality to make a zero pair here, and we end up with 6z is less than 48. We divide both sides by the 6 coefficient to solve for z, and we get z is less than 8. So that was step 1, okay? For step two, since angle BCA is in a triangle, this angle right here is in a triangle. This one right here. 
then the measure of angle BCA has to be greater than zero. Remember the protractor postulate said if, it's, if an angle is in a triangle, it has to be greater than zero, right? So we write 6Z minus 3 is greater than zero. Now we solve for Z. We can add 3 to each side to create a zero pair here. We get 6Z is greater than 3. Divide both sides by the coefficient 6, and we get Z is greater than 0.5. Step three, now we combine the inequalities. We had that z is less than eight, and now we have z is greater than 0.5. So the range of values for z is z. We have two inequality signs, so we start in the middle. z is greater than 0.5 and less than eight. Okay, now take a look at what these two guys are doing. Do you know what they're doing? They're playing tetherball and the angle of the tether ball changes with the speed of the ball. The slower the ball goes, the more the tether ball is, goes towards the pole. The faster you punch the tether ball or the tether ball goes around, the farther away it is from this pole. So the angle gets bigger, okay? So that would be slower, that would be faster. So this diagram shows the ball at two different speeds. So which ball is farthest from the pole? C or D? Well, we can see it's D, can't we? But the height of the pole and the length of the rope attached to the ball are the same for both triangles. So this pole height and this ball rope right here that's attached to the ball, those are the same length. But angle BAC is smaller than angle BAD. So ball D is farther from the pole, see? Because it's a larger angle. This one's closer because it's a smaller angle and that's by the hinge theorem. And the longer side is across from the long, longer angle, okay? So BC is less than BD, all right? Hinge theorem, longer side is across from the larger angle. So we know that's farther away. So here's proving triangle relationships. We're gonna do a two column proof. Take a look at this, we have overlapping triangles. Now if they confuse you, remember we can redraw this to separate overlapping triangles to visualize better. So it's given that KL, this one right here, is congruent to NL, this one right here. We need to prove that KM, this one, is greater than NM, this one. So we're trying to prove that this one is greater than this one, all right? So here's our two column proof. We've got segment KL is congruent to segment NL. Well, that's given right there. And LM is congruent to LM because they're both using LM, aren't they? That's the reflexive property of congruence, they're sharing it. And the measure of angle, KLM, KLM, so it's both of these here, it's this big angle, is equal to this NLM, this one right here, and KLN, this one right here. So this big angle measure is equal to this one plus this one, all right? That's the, addition, the angle addition postulate. Number four says the measure of angle KLM, KLM, this double big one right here, is larger than the measure of angle NLM, this little one on this side. That's the comparison property of inequality. We talked about that a couple videos ago in uh, 5.4b. If A plus B is equal to C and B is greater than zero, then A is less than C, all right? So if this big angle here is greater than this one. Well, this big angle has a bigger segment as its third side, doesn't it? And this one would have this little segment. So KM is greater than NM because of the hinge theorem. This longer side is across from the larger angle, okay? So one more time, the hinge theorem and its converse establish inequalities involving two triangles in which two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of the other triangle. So I'm hoping my colors are going to help you and you'll see how the green is in the middle and then it's red and then it's red and then the green is at the bottom. See the difference? So this is the hinge theorem and it's converse. If the included angles are not congruent then the longer third side is across from the larger included angle. If the third sides are not congruent, then the larger included angle is across from the longer third side. See? 
Make sure you remember to reverse the inequality sign when multiplying or dividing by negative numbers. Got to do it. Got to reverse that sign, okay? Our next video is going to be a recap of some of the things we learned in Algebra 1 that was quite a while ago, so it would be good for you. We're going to simplify radical form, okay? We're going to put it in simplest radical form. That's 5.6b, all right? And then after that, we can move on to 5.7. So I hope you were able to write the theorems down, and I hope you understood them. And I hope my little scissor and book analogy and everything helped you. So have a great day. I'll see you next time. Hit that like button for me. Bye.